Now this is lecture nine for psychopharmacology, psychology 6700. And today we're going to talk about psychotic disorders. Now the classic psychotic disorder, the one that you generally think of in psychiatry, is schizophrenia. Uh, but there are, when someone presents with psychotic symptoms, there are a number of other possibilities that need to be considered. The first thing, of course, um, is to rule out substance abuse and medical conditions. Um, metabolic conditions such as renal failure, brain tumor, uh, other organic brain disorders, head injury, seizure disorders can all simulate symptoms of schizophrenia and uh, can cause the break with reality or the mental confusion that you see with schizophrenia. Once primary medical conditions are ruled out, there are a number of different psychiatric possibilities when you see someone presenting with psychotic symptoms. So the differentiation is based on a number of factors. It's going to be based on duration and symptom picture. So duration uh, because uh, schizophrenia is a, a fairly profound diagnosis, uh, you don't make the diagnosis if someone has only recently been showing psychotic features. You start off uh, in the first 30 days diagnosing brief psychotic disorder. Uh, for six months, it would be considered schizophreniform disorder, and then after six months, when it becomes apparent that the symptoms are fairly chronic, uh, you would make a diagnosis of schizophrenia. Now, some things to differentiate. Uh, delusional disorder. When a person shows delusions, but they're non-bizarre, uh, that would be delusional disorder rather than schizophrenia. In schizophrenia, oftentimes the uh, uh, delusions are quite bizarre and obviously uh, couldn't be real. People are in my lungs singing, there are Martians that have invaded my body, things like that. Uh, of course, you have to consider the social context when you're considering delusions. Uh, I worked in a prison uh, for a year and patients would talk about uh, there being a plot to kill them. Well, in a prison that could be very realistic, so you have to consider the social context. Uh, some other diagnose, uh, diagnostic possibilities, if there is an affective component, uh, either mania or depression, you consider diagnoses such as schizoaffective, um, major depressive disorder with psychotic features, bipolar disorder with psychotic features. Uh, a key feature of schizophrenia, though, is often that the delusions uh, and uh, hallucinations are more bizarre than you'd find in some of those other disorders. Now the uh, essential components of schizophrenia, you have positive symptoms. Those include delusions, which as I mentioned tend to be quite bizarre. Uh, hallucinations, which are more commonly auditory hallucinations. Bizarre behavior. Uh, and then what are sometimes referred to as first-rank symptoms, ideas of reference. Uh, you think that uh, things refer to you um, when they couldn't possibly. Uh, a diagnostic question that I particularly have found valuable is to ask the patient, uh, do you ever feel like the radio or television is sending a message directly to you, or do you ever see messages to you when you look at uh, license plates? and? Uh, quite commonly with schizophrenic patients, they'll, they'll answer affirmatively. Uh, thought broadcasting, they feel that people, uh, that they can send thoughts to other people or that people are inserting thoughts in their heads. Uh, they may feel that thoughts and feelings are controlled externally. Uh, a common factor in all these um, symptoms is uh, an alienation. They don't realize that their own thoughts are being generated by themselves and so that can um, explain hallucinations. It's really their own thoughts, but it seems so foreign and so alien that they think that they're hearing other people's voices. Negative symptoms include loss of pleasure, apathy, blunted affect, uh, poverty of thought, disorganization, uh, formal thought disorder. The, the form of the thought becomes scrambled, so you'll see 
tangential thoughts. Uh, it won't make any sense. They'll have loose associations. They'll, uh, uh, instead of connecting thoughts by uh, uh, meaning, they might connect thoughts by rhyme and start um, uh, saying things that don't make sense. Distractibility, senseless behavior are all schizophrenic symptoms. Some of the causes, the dopamine hypothesis, uh, s originally the thought was simply that there's too much dopamine. That's been refined a little bit. Uh, it appears that certain areas of the brain uh, have overactivity of dopamine and other areas such as the prefrontal cortex have underactivity. So that explains both the positive and the negative symptoms. The treatment of schizophrenia, the older medications are called the typicals. So you have low potency typicals such as Thorazine, Melaril. Uh, these cause more sedation and have what are called anticholinergic effects, which I'll talk more about. And then the high potency uh, medications like Haldol and Navane, which have more extrapyramidal symptoms, which I'll talk about later. The atypicals are the newer generation. They include medications like Abilify and Risperdal that are very commonly used as first-line medications for schizophrenic patients. Uh, these have some other problems, though, including weight gain, uh, high cholesterol, hyperlipidemia, and uh, blood pressure problems. Uh, and in fact, with the newer medications, uh, they actually have a negative effect on lifespan. Uh, so that's a, a major concern with some of the, the newer uh, antipsychotic medications. Extrapyramidal symptoms, uh, Parkinsonian symptoms, uh, a tremor, shuffling gait, slowed movements, decreased facial expression, dystonia, uh, neck and shoulder spasms, and akathisia, uh, pacing and agitation. Uh, the akathisia, it's easy to mistake that for a primary psychotic feature, so it's important to know that that can be a medication side effect. Uh, now these medication side effects are all treatable uh, with other medications or by changing the medication, so they're important to be on the lookout for, and it's important to educate the patient about them. Anticholinergic effects, uh, they tend, medications tend to dry you out. So dry, dry eyes and mouth, blurred vision, trouble urinating, constipation, sedation, and sexual dysfunction are all anticholinergic effects. Tardive dyskinesia is a long-term medication effects of antipsychotics, more of a problem with the older generation than the newer generation, but they're of uh, considerable concern. It includes um, tongue jutting, uh, other involuntary movements, um, they are stigmatizing because they often make the patient look odd. Uh, they start late in treatment and they can continue after medication has been discontinued. Sometimes they're permanent um, and uh, oftentimes they persist for years. The course of treatment with schizophrenia, agitation and confusion tend to be the first symptoms to, to respond. Uh, delusions and hallucinations can continue for quite a long time and are more difficult uh, to treat. Uh, generally, uh, a psychotic patient is treated for uh, at least a year after remission of the symptoms, and uh, in many cases, treatment is lifelong. Uh, the psychological treatment for psychosis it's very important to educate the patient about medication compliance. Often they don't have insight into their symptoms. They don't see the need for medication. So you as a psychotherapist are going to be focusing on that to a large extent. Um, recognizing prodromal symptoms, recognizing when they're having a relapse. Involving family is very important uh, so that their family can stay in contact with you as the therapist and with the psychiatrist and can recognize when a, a relapse is imminent. Uh, increasing insight into their symptoms is crucially important. And uh, a rehabilitation model where you're teaching the patient now that their symptoms uh, have been controlled, you're teaching them to relate better and uh, moving them forward toward higher functioning socially and even occupationally uh, is an important part of the treatment.